See you in the movies. Cats don't dance. Leaves your kind of speechless. Hello and welcome to I Can't Believe It's Not the Mouse, the podcast all about animated films not from Disney. I'm your host, Octaviano Macias, and today I'm joined by a guest host. Arnel, introduce yourself. Oh, well, you already got my first name wrong, right? Hello, everyone. <laughs> my name is Arnel. I'm actually the animation founder of a YouTube channel called 3 Fi, aka uh, Flip Fine Films or whatnot. You can go ahead, search it up on to whatever you want to, whatever, what time, which you may prefer. Darn it, stumbled a bit, but it's okay. And uh, I am currently here to say, to be part of uh, I Can't Believe It's Not The Mouse podcast. Thank you for letting me be on the podcast there, Octav. No problem. So today we're going to be talking about the animated movie Cats Don't Dance, a forgotten oh Turner animated feature from the 90s that has become a cult classic since. Oh, man. I, I've Okay, first of all, Cats Don't Dance... Uh, funny thing about it is that the first time i ever watched it unbeknownst to me was actually at the age of three at the age really? of three according to my, what my mom has told me but since then i actually fully watched it the first time when i was a kid at the age of five which is insanely i could i could still remember all the details to this day that movie is still just a great amount of animation altogether and i was surprised right. that that yeah. was not a, and i thought I had like more, much more Disney quality to it than any of like the films at the time, and I thought that was a Disney movie, but it didn't turn out to be so. But it still garnered a lot of my attention during my youth. Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, I probably watched it around the same age as you. I can't, re- I can't really pinpoint an exact age. I know it used to play on Cartoon Network a lot. Uh, yeah, it honestly, did it so many times. I don't know how Cartoon Network is like now. I mean, realistically, I haven't seen regular TV in years, so. Same, I'm kind same. of lost. Yeah, like I'm kind of lost uh, on how a lot of this even is like now. But I know it used to rerun a bunch of old cartoons, old movies. Granted, at that time, it was still pretty recent. I mean, at, at the very least, I would have seen it around 99, 2000. Not too sure. But I know the movie came out like 97. So yeah, I definitely would have been wouldn't have been too old. Still, it's not something that you could see because I mean, the last time I remember seeing that channel, all they would play would be just like live action movies or just popular stuff so it's, it's gone way off base but yeah it, it's it's honestly kind of interesting to just to see how different it is and honestly i i think that a lot of the cult fan base is owed to cartoon network uh, rerunning it obviously people would have seen it elsewhere but i feel like a lot of people who have seen it saw it because of the channel yeah <laughs> i mean the the channel was definitely responsible for showing us a lot of really good old movies. In fact, it was also responsible for putting on any of the Scooby-Doo movies on there because like, they were just like either straight to VHS and then they were put onto the Cartoon Network to further boost uh, their channel ratings as well. Oh, yeah, but, without a doubt. But other than that, I think like the most notable movies I ever saw on that channel was definitely, for sure, Cats Don't Dance. I think it was called Rodney Dangerfield. When Rodney Dangerfield was playing as oh, a dog um, or something... Gone talking about rover dangerfield that's one i gotta talk about go. someday rover dangerfield that one was a great one no respect at all <laughs> yeah that's a really well animated movie i don't know how how well it holds up i haven't seen it in years but from what i remember i did get a lot of laughs out of it and at the very least the animation still looks great from what i've seen like in snippets i mean the only yeah. scenes i've seen um like recently of that movie was just uh there's the bit where he's hunting down like the the, the wolf or whatever that's chasing the turkey and there's also a bit where he sings about uh, not being on the christmas tree <laughs> which is uh i don't know maybe i'll make it the christmas episode i'm not sure hey, but it'll be worthwhile yeah i mean I, that, that was another one that i remember seeing on there another one that definitely i i'll have to talk talk about it someday that owes its popularity to um cartoon network is uh the iron giant because i remember they used to do like uh 24 hour or yeah like 24 hour marathons of it like for a few like a, like every once in a while so it was definitely something where a lot of people my age your age would have definitely caught on to that because of that because i know that that's another movie that didn't do so well in the box office when it first came out yeah we should probably get back to talking about the movie <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> so, cats right. don't dance. No worries. let's go back to cats don't dance uh with cats don't dance uh, for those of you who have never seen the movie it's an animated movie about a cat obviously who goes to hollywood uh to make it big and it's supposed to be like the the classic hollywood era you got like uh king kong's roaming around they get, they make a lot of references to like old stars even the villain of the movie uh darla dimple is a reference of Shar- shirley temple which again it's something that i feel like 
people around that time would have probably gotten even more if they saw Cartoon Network a lot or any of those kids' channels just because I, I remember they used to run a lot of ads of like, oh, get your Shirley Temple collection on VHS, just call this number or whatever. So that's how <clears throat> I knew oh my who that gosh. was. Yeah, the direct to call commercials. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> that was a time. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually saw one of those ads fairly recently at work, like during my break. They had one and it was the only real update to it from what I remember was just that instead of VHS, they were mentioning it was like a DVD collection of the Shirley Temple movies. But I'm like, this is the exact same ad they were running when I was like five or six years old. Yeah. So, and honestly, that's the only reason why I even know who Shirley Temple is. Like, no offense to any Shirley Temple movies, I'm sure they're fine, but I I never would have known who that was if not for those commercials. And of course, yeah. because of that, I'm aware of like, okay, this is who they're specifically parodying with the villain in Cat Still Dance, which is honestly it was a really funny um character. So the the main character is essentially just going to Hollywood to make it big. The the I mean, Shirley Temple character. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh sorry. So, what was with that? the way oh uh what well, about was about to say was like yes, yeah, so, like the plot is like mainly about this cat who's just trying to get them himself uh into the world of fame because he's trying to live out his dream in that in sense. So that that kind of story. Is that, yeah. you, is that story that everyone's like goes from starting from ordinary to extraordinary at the end of the time? Yeah. And of course, it's a it's all race metaphor. I mean, it doesn't go too deep to a point where it's like Zootopia or just, just use a, a recent example. But obviously, it's supposed to be a race metaphor because it's a whole thing where like, oh, Hollywood only hires humans. And when it comes to the animals, they're like background characters or like in the case of Kong, it would be like, oh, it's just a bad guy. So you have that whole thing where it's like, okay, the animal actors, no one really cares about them. And it's kind of similar to how old Hollywood was when it came to persons of color um, actors where it's like, okay, we'll just hire someone in the background. If we have them involved in the story, they're usually bad guys, the the jokes or whatever. (laughs) Or in some cases, they don't even get the right people for it because... One of the things that people don't really talk about as often is how often they would have like, okay, we're going to set this movie in Asia. Let's get a Mexican to play the Asians. Or sometimes it would be in the reverse. Like you see some movies where it's like, okay, this movie takes place in Mexico or some Latin American country. And you'd have the, the main Mexican character or whoever being played by an Asian man. And you could clearly see like, no, no, this is clearly not a, a Latin person. So the movie's kind of taking aim at that. It's not doing it too direct to a point that it becomes an issue because I know one of the problems when you go too deep into it is that you run the risk of either losing a story or the metaphor can come out jumbled because, of course, with it being animals and Zootopia, you, it's Zootopia even runs uh, runs into this issue. You have a whole thing where it's like, okay, is this person supposed to be represent this kind of person or that kind of person? And it just becomes a whole mess. But it is nice yeah. to think that the movie... <laughs> is talking about race while talking about yeah. the whole Hollywood issue. Yeah, I mean, especially with, when it comes down to that movie, since being it, being in the golden age of Hollywood, you know, it's only the beautiful people that will really be noted, like having that amount of notoriety as well. And yeah. merely the background characters are those who actually just work around the field as, as like, like, like PAs or whatnot. Those who are just being treated as like somewhat, in a sense, there'll be moments that in, in the golden age of Hollywood that some actors would actually like, like tell these people to like you know help them out with anything like usually like you know like usual pa stuff trying to get that stuff but they never get any of the recognition of it of like or any credit or thanks to them thus far or some kind some kind of form in that sense but yeah and there's a funny thing about that uh, about that movie in general because like it just shows as to how much of there was an elitism towards like uh like the act from like the hollywood people the most beautiful ones versus those who were like work you could say the animals are the ones who work basically behind the scenes or just filler in that right. sense. Right. So that was the most, that was like one of the really cool, interesting things about it as well, even though it captured a lot, a good amount of most of golden Hollywood's uh, history. Right. Right. Honestly, it's one of those things that I'm like, if this movie had come out today, I mean, granted it, I know it would have been vastly different because you wouldn't, there's a low chance that it would be 2d, but just assuming yeah. that in some magical way it came out today, as it were, I would imagine it would probably be a bigger hit. Like not not probably with with kids, but at the very least within the film community, just because so oh, well one uh, you've seen in recent years more people respect animation. Uh, yes, of course. Because like even within um, the last two decades, compared to what it was like in the nineties, 
uh, just going by something more recent, you notice that there's more animated movies coming out regularly in theaters, more animated movies that at least uh, get extra recognition and aren't just treated as kids films. They still have that um, stigma on it, but at the very least, it's moving away from it. But of course, because so much of this movie is drenched in Hollywood um, history, and you see a lot of like you know actual Hollywood stars like in the caricatures and just mm-hmm. in the details, it's like you know that this would be a much more beloved movie, more much more popular movie if it had been released now, where people oh, kind of respect the media. And you see a lot more movies about the making of Hollywood that tend to get a, a lot of popularity, whether it's like The Artist or Argo, just to name movies from like the last decade. Yeah. And shoot, what was like, there was a lot of cool, interesting things about it. I did not know for a fact that, yes, that movie was the last time Gene Kelly actually got involved, aka that was the reason why at the end of the credits was uh, having him, him in memory dedicated to him. I did not know that, that well it did come out more of a actual uh a homage to what Gene Kelly has done in in his movies because if you think about it yeah the character being played yeah. as a uh, Danny has a lot and most of the characters there have a lot of parallels to that of like singing in the rain yeah. so that was actually pretty cool to see even some scenes were like let's say what was that one part uh it's that scene from Singing in the Rain where Gene Kelly and his uh their and his uh, co and his co-star were going and they're doing these like oral kind of uh this this oral training where they're trying to enunciate stuff and it becomes oh, yeah. a bit of a dance number. And right, so, right. so that kind of drew parallels to Danny and uh Pudge Meyer, who was like, Okay, Pudge Meyer doesn't know how like how to dance, so Danny ends up trying to teach him and all that stuff. So that's right. I was like, Oh, this is a pretty interesting little detail I saw. And yeah. I kept like trying I kept seeing a lot more in that but all in all it still resembled it still had its own soul i would say it still kept to its own original like storytelling and soul and the, the whole soul of the movie that it was enough to be like one of one of, i would say one of the greatest animations i've ever seen in my life yeah i mean uh, one thing uh watching it again recently that i noticed more especially now knowing about the gene kelly thing because that's something i found out like a few years ago is that actually focusing on the characters um, like their movements when it comes to like their the singing scenes, the dancing. You notice that it's actually a lot more detailed and expressive compared to a lot of similar animated movies where they have um, musical numbers or whatever. And you'll notice like, okay, yeah, I could definitely see Gene Kelly's hands were on this at the very least. Um, because you can see yeah, he, the motion is oh. just very reminiscent of that. Yeah, because he def- cause when he was put onto this production, because he was just in- extremely in- like he enjoyed the story about it so much that he was able to help out with the animators in choreographing the dance numbers with it. So that was a really cool, like that was a really cool thing to do. And that that just completely much like put his legacy down before, before his passing. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I kind of wonder uh, thinking on that, how it would have been like it had it been made a few years earlier when uh, Michael Jackson was actually involved with this uh, early on. He actually was supposed to be the star. It was supposed to be a, a vehicle for, for, for Michael Jackson. Honestly, I could imagine that if had Michael Jackson stayed on there, it probably would have been a much bigger hit just because Jackson was a really big um, singer at the time, regardless of you know the allegations. But even then, that would come a little more uh, after this. But regardless of that, it just makes me wonder what if uh yeah he had the he had an amazing amount of star power i mean this guy was worldwide michael jackson had all the star power going for him but due to scheduling conflicts yeah he wasn't able to do it however when i saw that and like seeing the movie i could definitely see michael jackson playing as the main character because if it matched up with sawyer's character it would really mesh in very well because sawyer is more like she gives off like the whole like souls blue blues vibes you get me and uh and that's how I was like, huh? If you mix that, well, I and if Michael Jackson had stayed on, dude, they would be a they would have been a serious dynamic duo for that animation, and that would have that would have helped out a lot more, in, especially in the box office. Yeah, I mean, if he had stayed on, granted, that would have been definitely big, been um your big actor for the movie. Not that there isn't any big actors on this, but most of them are relatively. I don't want to say unknown, but they're. They're, they're, they're somewhat actors. known, but they're okay. not like I would say, you know, uh, would revered be the wor- word? Oh, no, that seems very insulting. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I they're, they're pretty like much respected. I would say they're respected. Actually. Yeah, because I mean, they're um, they're character actors because you get Scott Bakula as um, Danny, who most people yeah. 
would be aware of from I believe it was Quantum Leap. I might be mixing up the shows, but I know that's uh one that he was on. You have um John Reese Davies as um Willie the Mammoth on here, and of course mm-hmm. people know him as Salah from uh Indiana Jones, and he's done a bunch of other stuff beyond that. So you do have um some people who are uh rel- relatively known, but they're mostly character actors. They're not the people that you would normally get the big names on the on the poster or whatever, you know. Honestly, had Jackson have been on there, maybe it would have been something. So then again, there's no guarantee that the movie would have come out the same because I know around that same time they were uh towing with the idea of instead of being um anthropomorphic cats like they ended up being in the movie, it was gonna be that like, closer to realistic cats. There were gonna be some live action and animation hybrids, which would have been interesting, but no guarantee that it would have been the same movie. Apparently, it was supposed to be like, oh, yeah, well, you know, since back in those days of Hollywood, which is why it was specifically Cats, uh, Cats would often hang around the studios. So the idea yeah. was that, like, okay, some Cats snuck around the studio and then they would start dancing to mimic the the, the Hollywood actors. So who knows? <laughs> it might have been something fun. It, it might not have been. You never really know with these things. It's always more interesting to know, to know the what if over the what was or um like what ended up being i guess is what i'm saying yeah yeah um some behind the scenes about it was that this was like like uh the main director for it it was like it wasn't this this was his first outing as a director for an animation because he he yeah. used to be a former like uh digital effects animator for disney during this time yeah it's um the guy the guy's name is mark dendo who also yeah. voices um uh darla's um big butler max who is honestly the best character. In, in this. <laughs> um, uh, the funny yeah. story was that uh, they they didn't have enough money to get like a like one more like good voice actor at the time to get Max, so they decided to use his his own as like filler. Yeah. And then at the moment that they tried to get it, it's like you know what, we're already down, we're already way too late on the production. Let's just go ahead, and just use my voice and like deepen it down in a way so that way no one can notice my voice. <laughs> So like we're just gonna stick with it, okay? I mean, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's a good way to put yourself in a movie, man. That, that works out just fine. Consider it a cameo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's honestly not unheard of. I mean, uh, one of the more recent examples of something like this happening, though slightly different, was um, when they did the the fourth Shrek movie, where um, the director of that one actually ended up voicing the villain of the movie, Rumble Stillskin. Uh, oh wow yeah and in that case it was more or less just because apparently they liked his voice so much that they decided to keep it in instead of getting i think they were trying to get like paul mccartney at the time or something (laughs) so it's one of those things where it's like uh yeah it's one of those things that does happen every now and then yeah with mark dindle doing uh the voice of max honestly great i mean it's a really funny character (laughs) and honestly in the case of mark dindle i I gotta say, because he's only directed um, three movies. Uh, mm-hmm. After this, he would go on to do The Emperor's New Groove and um, Chicken Little. Chicken Little is not a good movie, just up front. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, he did really good with Emperor's New Groove. And then Chicken Little? Uh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not entirely his fault. There's a whole behind the scenes thing. It's one of the most interesting behind the scenes um, stories when it comes to that one with Disney, because they were constantly coming in like, oh, we gotta be Pixar, because, you know, uh, it was at the time where Pixar was almost leaving Disney because uh, they oh, weren't yeah. fully owned by them. So we were like, okay, we got to rush out this CG animated movie. It's going to be, you know, it's got to be better, but we also got to make it marketable. We got to make it uh, a big hit. Uh, yeah, they completely saturated the advertising market with Chicken Little. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, at one point it was supposed to be an animated movie um, starring, uh, like, like in the original story, a female chicken. Um, dealing with the father because that was supposed to be a little more personal to um, yeah. the director but Disney came in and said well girls don't don't sell as well as boys do when it comes to toys so make that chicken a boy but wow yeah I mean oh my, gosh. My, 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 my bigger point and bringing up uh, his later movies is that okay so two out of these, these three are good movies and well uh, what I would say is that those two do have um, one or, I guess, two things in common. They have a great villain with a great psychic. So you have Emperor's New Group of <laughs> Yzma and Kronk. And then you yeah. kind of have the inverse of that, or I'm probably saying that wrong, like the opposite or whatever. Yeah. Are the Dimple and Max, where it's like, okay, you know, you got the, the old lady with the himbo uh, at her side. And then you got uh, the, the little girl with this big brute who's actually good at his job. 
<laughs> at her side. Yeah. Like on, honestly, you got this. You got this. You got this cute and a little adorable like child who's basically a sweetheart, but you yeah. know, is corrupted by Hollywood fame and all that because you know, there's no one wants. She wants to keep her spot to herself. That's how she is. And then you got this freaking tall, gigantic, ugly bastard of a freaking butler <laughs> being able to help him out, help her out in any which way, just so he could stay, still keep his job, I guess. But you know, it, it helps out. It all balances out. <laughs> yeah, and I, I could be wrong to um, shit. I'm I'm forgetting the the name of the movie, but it's the one where. Where the guy is, um, like, it starts off with him already dead in the pool, uh, the uh. old Hollywood movie, and it's uh, basically uh, the story goes back, and it's like, okay, here's this actress. I think it was her name was like Desmond or something. I can't remember. Um, I, I I know we saw it in class, uh, or you might not have been in that one, but I, I know I saw it in um, in film class, anyways. But yeah, it's like you know you have the old actress, and she had like a butler who used to be a director, and you. The, the butler does anything for her. I'm honestly blanking out on the name of the movie. Yeah, same. I feel like I've seen that movie in the film class, but I'm not entirely sure. Not entirely sure. I don't know. Someone's going to probably respond with, it's this movie, you dumbass, and I'll probably just slap it on the video. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's going to slap it on the video for both of us. <laughs> um, we'll come around. We'll come around to watch it. I wouldn't mind. But yeah, like, it, like, I don't know if it was actually in- intended to be a a parody of that but i kind of feel like it just because when i saw that movie um and saw the, the butler specifically i was quickly reminded of max like just the design wise so i was like okay so that's probably where they got that from originally i thought it was just like okay here's our version of king kong as a butler <laughs> <laughs> he's king kong size yeah i, I think that was, that was like partially what they're alluding to it's like like a scenario of what if king kong actually stayed with the girl in the city this is what, <laughs> what would happen <laughs> and, and it's and, funny because if you notice that um max never actually enters a room that's the funny thing because yeah. anytime you actually see him inside a room he's already there like there's a whole bit where like okay when he, when he's first introduced he's called upon and you see the hole that he um came from but you don't actually see him walk through the hole. You'll see, like, okay, there's already a hole, and there's these these massive um, legs just walking through the camera. So they're like, okay, so someone just came through. Obviously, it's this guy, but you don't actually see that. And then when yeah. he exits the room, you do see him walking towards the hole, but you never actually see him go through the hole. Like, the light just blinds everything, and he's already gone. Yeah. So I always thought that was kind of funny how you never actually see him enter or leave a room. He's just there. Or he's yeah, not. He's just there already, or he vanishes right away. Like he's a blink of an eye kind of character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm like, and the okay. only one like you can actually see him like entering or like, or, or like coming out of something was at like, the the very end of like the movie when the actual conflict starts to get to the. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the movie is really funny. Yeah, the movie is just really fun to watch, especially. Oh, it just, it just, and rewatching it not too long ago, just, damn, I hate Darla Dimple even more. <laughs> Man, don't freaking do that to cats. Come on, cats are adorable. To any yes. animal. <laughs> yeah, any animal is freaking adorable. Let's just say that. Any animal is freaking adorable. I don't know why, like, Darla Dimple just had to be the antithesis of. Sh- I will, yeah, the definite antithesis of a Shirley Temple, in a sense. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, uh, so in the case of... ratty and always hating animals? My gosh. I, I just love the animation on her, though, because you can see how quick she goes from being nice to just a little bitch, and I always love just the little motion on that. It's, yeah. it's very smooth. It's something... In terms of the movies that I've done so far um, on this show, uh, I did Transformers the movie... Anastasia, uh, it's such a beautiful day, and recently Pompoco. I would say this is the best animated movie of the bunch, just because the animation is very consistent. Like, not that it was bad in any of those movies, but it's very smooth. It's, the lines are very clean. Uh, yeah. The coloring works great to it, which is surprising to me, considering that there's not really an HD version of this movie available for audiences, which sucks. Like, the yeah. only thing you can find is DVD or standard quality streaming. Because, uh, honestly, I have to get the DVD here from Amazon, which 
I get disappointed right away in, in terms of watching it again, uh, realizing that it's not even in widescreen. It's actually just a full screen. And when I looked into it, they mentioned like, okay, there is a widescreen DVD out there, but it's much more expensive. It's harder to find. And even if you order it online, you're not guaranteed to get that one because the cover is pretty much the same as the full screen version. Uh, there's yeah. not even any marking. So there's a high chance that you might get the, the wrong one in, in there. So I ended up just being like, okay, well, I'll just stick with the full screen version. That's pro- that's the way I saw it in TV anyways, since that was before we yeah. had the HD stuff. But the fact that yeah. we don't have a, a widescreen version or a Blu-ray version of this is really sad. And I kind of hope that if this podcast does anything has raised enough interest to at least get that going. Cause it's pretty sad to me that, you know, you got this movie that came out like in the late nineties. Yeah. Just, of course it's not lost. I have a DVD here, but it's to that point where it's very easy to get lost since um, we haven't fully gotten rid of DVDs, but we're getting to that point where, okay, we got the next step from Blu-ray with 4k so DVDs are definitely going to be on their way out soon. So I mean, no currently the uh, the main zeitgeist of these of this media uh, at this moment in time is mostly putting on like streaming and then digital libraries now. Yeah, that, that's uh, another thing, which it's not even so, available in a whole lot of them. Yeah, true. Uh, thankfully, uh, I was able to watch this video. I mean, this animation. I would say this animation on Amazon. Amazon actually has the copy that you can buy off that way you can keep for yourself and it's and i saw it and it was like widescreen so that was really good to have um so even though we still have the digital one i would still prefer actually seeing that get updated with like new with the with the whole 4k or blu-ray aesthetic yeah because i definitely want uh uh, an actual physical copy of course because with streaming there's no guarantee that it's there forever i mean uh, exactly yeah because you know you got certain movies that have gotten hard to find i mean I, I know this was available in streaming but i just wanted the physical copy just so i can have an actual thing um yeah but yeah for it's posterity <laughs> yeah for and posterity even then it's just like yeah they should at least give this i mean you know again referencing other movies that i ha- i've had on the show with transformers that's another movie that didn't do so well when it came out in its box office um with the box office but it's actually gotten, you know, not only a, a Blu-ray release, but it recently got a 4K release. So it's something where it's like, okay, they are they're actually giving that movie love. I would like to see that offer with this movie. Yeah, definitely. You know what's really surprising is that you know, uh out of during the time that it was released, that animated feature actually ended up becoming the best animated feature for, and got an award for it from like the Saturn Awards or the Anna, Annie Awards. Right. It was like the first one, of the first ever animated movies that was non Disney to actually get that kind of title. However, yeah, I mean, it failed miserably in the box office, which I want to know as to why that was. I mean, when uh, they put all this care onto this animation, I thought this would actually succeed. But do you know as to why that would cause that, or because that 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 one kind of bothered me a bit? To be honest, I'm um, not just be good. Yeah, I'm not sure because I didn't really see, and I probably should have checked up to see what what was released against it. I mean, my only assumption, uh, realistically, was just like like I mentioned earlier, there wasn't as much love for animation as there is now because um, you would see a lot of animated movies that weren't from Disney around that time or even yeah. earlier where they just came out but never really did much because most people were just like, well, it's the kids thing, or whatever. Which it's still kind of there now, but you at least have more of a community that actually cares about this stuff i mean you see um on a regular basis uh anything from like dreamworks illumination sony or whoever actually coming out on a pretty yearly basis whereas something like this it was pretty rare that anything not disney would have come out at the time i mean my only real assumption beyond that if there was any competition it might have been um hercules because i think that was the the disney movie of the time but i I, i'm not entirely sure on that to be quite honest maybe it was a re-release because i know that was another thing that that I had learned, not from this specifically, but when I did uh, the An- Anastasia episode, and I didn't bring it up then because I, I just didn't, it, it didn't really matter on that. That was a hit. Was that um, mm-hmm. when it came to animation, aside from, you know, no one really caring about it, one of the more common things that Disney would often do when it came to other movies releasing, not from them, is that they would try to um, kneecap its box office per- performance by either releasing a new movie against it or re-releasing an old classic. Like I know with Anastasia, they re-released, I think it was like a Little Mermaid or Beauty and the Beast against it. 
Just yeah. To kind of, just to kind of like, okay, you know, that's going to be there. Mm-hmm. Actually, now that I think about it, Anastasia might have been the other movie that, that could have taken this down. I'm not sure because I think that also came out around the time. I it might I might be a year off, but either way, point is that this movie just released on a bad time, whether it's going by whatever movies were out at the time or historically speaking. Um, what I saw about it was actually um, part of the reason why that movie kind of flopped was act- was was during the company itself. Apparently there was some acquisition going on with the, uh, oh, yeah. With that going on, like the Warner brothers acquisition. And then when Warner brothers actually got that, they didn't really care for it much or something like that. Yeah. That's that what I was actually, reading up on a bit. That actually sounds about right. Uh, now that you mention it, cause yeah, cause this is um, Turner animation who did it, which is now a Warner yeah, brothers company, go. but at the time, yeah, there was um a whole thing because I, I now that you mention it yeah i remember for for a time just go off with, with something different um for something like the looney tunes you could have watched it in multiple places where it was warner bird um like cartoon network nickelodeon or whatever else just because the rights were kind of divided up between turner animation and um and warner animation i don't know exactly mm-hmm. how that came about but I know it had something to do with like um, the head of Turner, um, Ted Turner, actually buying up some of the stuff. So Warner Bros. was like, okay, we're going to buy buy you guys up just because we want all our Looney Tunes in, in one umbrella, which, yeah, okay, so that actually would make sense because I know that Warner, Warner Bros., I mean, pretty much any studio, really, it, it's a common thing that they do where if um, they acquire a studio, most of the time, unless it's something that they're specifically interested in, they'll just kind of throw under the bus. I mean, we've seen that recently with Disney where they threw um, Blue Sky under the bus to the point that they've actually closed it down. So yeah. that's actually a, a sad ending for that company. So, yeah, now that you mentioned that, that does seem to, that wouldn't surprise me as the main fact, um, main thing that kind of screwed this over is that Warner Bros. probably bought it off, didn't didn't have any interest in it, just decided, okay, let's do the bare minimum when it comes to advertising, but we're not going to bother, you know, putting any a- actual effort, which is not too surprising given that even when it came to Warner Bros. Anima- animated stuff, like their, their own company, which again goes by the, the history of it. They didn't put that much effort when it came to their own things. I mean, with Iron Giant, that was a movie that fell because they just didn't do much promotion because they were like, well, it's a cartoon. Who cares? That actually ended up happening to Animaniacs to an extent because they had the... Yeah. The, we didn't actually see get to, get to see Animaniacs until like most recently, like maybe about about a year now? A year ago? Or like a few months ago? Well, uh, well when, when is the anime? if you're talking about the reboot, uh, yeah. I mean, that's a whole different thing, but... What I was going yeah. for was um because uh, at the time there was also the Animaniacs movie, the the, the Wacko's Wish movie. And oh, that was yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was actually supposed to be a theatrical movie and it apparently did well with test audiences. But Warner's was just like, look, we're gonna have to put in money to actually get into theaters, advertise it. We could just put it on VHS and we'll call it a day. Yeah, it became so, a straight to VHS thing. So yeah, oh. yeah. Actually now that you mentioned that. Yeah, it, more than more than likely, it was just Warner Bros. just sticking with the movie. Well, at least now they've gotten better understanding the power of animations uh, over time. They figured now it's like, oh, it's be- it's starting to garner a lot more success, especially. Yeah, especially during like the time of like Cartoon Network when most of their properties were being put on there. Understandably so, that changed their mind to actually bring in more stuff in the future. Honestly, in a way, it's kind of like now that I think about it, all the things that that Warner just did to kind of dick with their animated movies. <laughs> um, <laughs> It kind of feels like payback in a way, because I know. I would say karma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because like in karma. recent years, yeah. um, you know, Warner Bros. Um, started off the the Wag um, Studio, which is basically the Warner Animation Group. Yeah. Um, they started with, I believe, it was the Lego Movie was their first one that they did with that. Mm-hmm. Big hit, but then you get to their later movies, uh, regardless of quality, which I think. More often than not, they they produce good movies than bad. They've yeah. never really had a big hit like the Lego movie since because they did Storks didn't make much money. Lego Batman movie, uh, good movie, underperformed. It wasn't a bomb, but it, it did underperform. Uh, they had Scoob, which of course the, the pandemic kind of screwed that over. But either way, audiences were kind of mad at it. Even though I'm like, I mean, it's Scooby Doo. I, I I really don't have an issue with this. Yeah, <laughs> but I've noticed that like yeah, they kind of had. A, a lot of bad luck with their animated movies since then so it kind of feels like it's probably karma on their end because really, realistically <laughs> they, they do make some good stuff it's just 
Yeah. They outside do. of the Lego it's... movie, they've never actually had an actual head. Yeah. Outside of because like the Lego movie was like very well anticipated because this was the first ever movie that was really truly Lego inspired. You know, it wasn't like those usual 3D CGI stuff that you would see that would go straight to like let's say Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon. That was the that was just like very cool. And not only that, it kept the it kept to its roots as to what the Lego movie was, which is more like 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 a stop like an ode to basically Lego stop animation. I would say yeah. so. Um, and and to furthermore, just the idea and the fun playability and creativity that was the toy itself at the time. So, oh man, yeah, it's probably just all payback for for fucking over cats. <laughs> cats <don't laughs> <dance. laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> um, had they had they had they like had they like carefully like handled that even more so, it would have been able to garner so much more attention for that movie instead of it being an underrated classic as it is today. It's a holy burial ground that they've def- defaced or whatever. All yeah. They gotta, <laughs> all, all, all they got to do is just release it on on blu-ray you know you know give it an, a good treatment and you know they'll probably start getting their heads back <laughs> <laughs> i would say like dude i wouldn't mind if they do this as a re-release to theaters and just try yeah. and then advertise it again because this is such a wonderful animated movie and i feel like a lot of people would miss out on something as much of a jewel as this is to the world of animation if they don't actually get themselves re- or like uh shown or exposed to this kind of movie Especially now, I mean, I think a lot more people have definitely more appreciation towards animation, especially in this art form, because drawn animation is hard. It is extremely yeah. hard, and that one was just one of the one of the hardest heck um, stories about it was that it's gotten so hard that the last thing that they ever put on that movie was color. <laughs> so, like, and that one was like they had they had basically enough funding to get color onto that movie. <laughs> And, and it's it's good. It's well that. done. Yeah, it, it's well done. Uh, that's like props to them that way. And even though like the sh- the length of the movie was at least like uh, maybe like a little over an hour, they were still yeah. able to complete what's considered a classic feature of animation. Yeah, I mean it's. I think it only runs like at seventy five minutes uh, if you count the the credits on that. So it's, yeah, it's a relatively minutes. quick set. So it, it's definitely and, and for a, for a quick set, it actually crams in. Uh, everything it's needed it, it doesn't feel like it's too short it doesn't feel like it needed more or anything i feel like it, it runs at a perfect length but it was yeah. able to get all of the details on together and it was able to provide the enough animation to make the story quite compelling yeah like i, I would definitely love to see this re-release maybe as a fathom event i know that's a pretty big thing now where yeah like okay, oh yeah it's the 20th anniversary or whatever of this movie so let's put it out in theaters I mean, heck, if Iron Giant gets Fathom events, then might as well get <laughs> get Cats Don't Dance because that's still one of like one of my favorite animated movies of all time. The reason why I even um, automatically thought of bringing you on this was because I remember a few years back, uh, you actually found the poster amongst a bunch of <laughs> stuff yeah. from our old film film teacher. Um, I'm not sure if we can say her name or not. Uh, yeah, from, so I'll just so, leave it at yes, that. So I don't I wanna... do have, I do have the Cats No Dance poster. It is still actually with me. I just have it stored somewhere, so I don't have any bugs trying to come after it and eat it away. Because that is such a piece of nostalgic history right there. I yeah. am not gonna let go of that poster in any shape or form whatsoever. So to our film <laughs> teacher, you know, you know, I'm sure, sure, yeah. you know. Um, the funny, like the funny love. story about that was was like getting was that the that poster like didn't really belong didn't we belong to him in fact it was actually like his his like daughters so i had to like i had to get permission to do it and i've still like cherished the poster to this day because that's still a part of my childhood and i can't and i can't let that go at all (laughs) can't let go of the cats don't dance poster just because it was like a deep part of my childhood while growing up at the time and it's still really one hell of a classic so i'm not going to let that go (laughs) yeah especially Um, you know don't disappoint her with that (laughs) exactly i'm not gonna do that come on it is still um, with me i love that movie goodness yeah it's just a really wonderful movie i love the animation on it the cast is great on it the music we didn't really talk about much uh but honestly it's got some really good songs in there like um big and loud whether it's like the version where darla bimbo is giving like the nice 
you know the nice front, one and then so, there's the evil one which is really fun i remember when i saw it i saw that one as a kid i was kind of confused because i was like wait a second you know what's this old visual with the cats like what, what is she doing here yeah um, like what the heck like i'm still trying to process like the whole idea of like okay this is supposed to be an imagination sequence or some shit yeah I but saw it's this freaking dark ain't age, it so, yeah. <laughs> it's quite dark like looking at it back i was like damn that was a really dark dark <laughs> yeah i, I mean uh, uh, with with this i'm like i could see it being made today but i, I would imagine that if it were, they probably would have tried toning it down a bit just because I know some guidelines have gotten stricter while others have loosened up, which is interesting to look at. It would be surprising to see if they actually try and remake this and then bring it the whole, give it the 3D feel and then try and see where this goes afterwards. They should, they so should, far, all just, I mean, no, no. <laughs> they oh, should like, um, give it the, the live action Disney remake treatment, have them played, played by like, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> have the cast of cats come in they, they've got the technology they just need the story no don't bring cats into this i don't need this <laughs> jason derulo like, I like as cats that are bad. do not put like okay jason derulo i'm not gonna knock his talent he's actually a really good singer i wouldn't i wouldn't mind seeing him in there but don't give it the cats like that that freaking the 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 play cats is like treatment of a movie onto cats don't dance because that's just no man we're gonna have like uh the song nothing's gonna stop us um start off with with derulo saying danny <laughs> honestly was expecting that in cats where he would be like run tum tugger but we do get something close to that because the first line <laughs> in that actual song is um <laughs> Shit, I'm forgetting her name. Uh, well, I haven't watched Cats yet, so I don't know. <laughs> um, Rebel Wilson. Yeah. Rebel Wilson. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, like her first, uh, you know, she's she gives the first line in the song, which is her screaming, Rump Tum Tugger. So it's like, he didn't say it, but she did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Anyways, See, this how, has been... how did this combo go from Cats to Dance to the actual Cats? I mean, no. realistically, the interesting thing about this conversation, uh, this whole thing, has been that, uh, at least going by my notes, I had it kind of planned out, but already knew it was going to go off the rails anyways, <laughs> uh, that we would just be talking about Cats Still Dance with barely any mention to other movies, but then The Iron Giant, The Emperor's New Groove, a bunch of Disney stuff that I'm not supposed to talk about. Given this yeah, I know. <laughs> um, actually found its way on here. So that's one more. But yeah, I, I guess like uh, uh, closing thoughts. Uh, Cats don't dance. Thoughts. Great movie. Yeah. Like I said before, mm -hmm. I really hope that they create a, a make a Blu-ray of this or a 4K or whatever. It's actually restore the movie, make it a lot easier for people to watch. You know, put it on HBO Max or or wherever you want to put it on. Just actually have it available on streaming services so that people can actually you know seek this one out without um, having to go through some some hoops i mean not it's not that it's impossible but most people who are gonna you know look for this are probably gonna stop the second they see that it's not available on netflix or whatever so mm -hmm. just get it going somewhere easy i i really would love to see this someday in a much yeah, better quality because even on, on the dvd it still looks great but i know that it could look so much better if they had actually put it on that um put that that effort to restore it yeah if they restore it and then and it comes out in a more refined state than how it originally is so far We're not knocking down that classic at all i'm just saying like in this current age when like everything is all hd and whatnot yeah that would definitely help out the studio itself and would bring in new fans of the animation right so if we bring if that happens then i wouldn't i wouldn't mind being one of the first few people buying a ticket to watch that in theaters in its in its newly found uh state all right uh, other than that yeah i i would definitely wouldn't mind watching that again in the theater or even even on hbo max but thankfully amazon got me covered so i got that set <laughs> yeah. i would definitely want to get that dvd if the if any of the case because i would want to share that to my kids one day absolutely mm -hmm. so thank you all for watching and listening this has been octaviano macias with guest host arnel regis Arnell, would you like to plug something in before we go? Um, not much other than that. If you're ever interested in actually watching some animations, what I do as a, I am a stop motion animator that specifies in Legos, but I also play with other kinds of animation as well. If you want to, you can go ahead and go on to my YouTube channel, which is uh, 
on www.youtube.com slash F-I-F-I-F-I lion, uh, L-I-O-N. I do not know why I made that like a long time ago, but it's just that's just part of the URL now. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys had enjoyed this and with our discussion of Cats Don't Dance. And if you guys are really a big fan of like, especially animation and Legos in general, just go ahead, come by, see my channel. If you actually like it, go ahead and subscribe. And also some other news is that I will actually be releasing another animation down the line by the end of the month or by the first week of September. So nice. be on the lookout if you're ever actually interested. And with my good friend here, Octaviano, he's actually part of the YouTube animation that I'm currently working on. Uh, he's actually been part of the series, as you can see, that has been put on there. You can see that's uh, this great guy right here, the one with the halo helmet, whatnot. Oh. Sorry, Microsoft. Uh, <laughs> but this guy right here is who Octaviano plays as. And he plays a really cool, funny character I think that you'll love and respect. So, again, to go ahead, just look on my YouTube channel. Um, if you don't, if you think the link is too hard to find, you can just go on to the YouTube channel search bar and just look up the three things, which is the number three, and an, an F, and an I. And then you'll instantly be put on the first channel that shows up on there. Thank you for that. And for those of you listening who enjoyed this, Please consider subscribing to my channel. That's Psycam Films. Right? Oh, yes, Psycam Films. Uh, of course, this this podcast is on Spotify, and of course, I do have a Patreon account on www.patreon.com/psycams. That's S A I C A M S. Go on there, support me for any amount that you want. Anything gets you a shout out in my videos and any of my work. So thank you for that. Thank you for watching. And thank you, Arnell, for being on here. Oh, man, it's been a pleasure. And I hope in the future, when we get to more discussions like this, oh, man, I am down for it. <laughs> Just wait until we do the Lego movie. Oh, oh, yes. I have I have so much to talk about about that movie. There were so many things that went on with that one. So for sure, I'll be waiting for that day when it happens. Thank you for listening. Take care, guys. Hey, just wanted to say thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. Comment below if you had any thoughts on this. And if you want to support me even more, there's always the option of Patreon. Yes, I have a Patreon. Patreon would be a great way to help me grow this channel as it's a great way to get equipment, a great way to let me know what you guys like, and it's a great way to help me financially. Just saying, the more I have on Patreon, the more time I'll have for these videos. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.